I'm Jono Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to work with velocity within a production. Firstly, to find out what that is and what it does, and then we're going to see how we can control it to make sure that the velocities that we program or play don't become too wild for the tracks that we're actually working on. So firstly, let's have a listen to the track that I've prepared. We've just got a sort of dusty little piano part to which we're going to add our own melody. Okay, so we've got this really nice sort of dusty piano sound. So what is velocity? Well, whenever we play a keyboard, we either play strong notes or we play more gently. And the way that that information is gathered by our controller keyboards and sent to logic is called velocity. In other words, what I can do is to play very gently and what I'll end up with is a low velocity, or I can play much harder notes and I'll end up with a very high velocity. And velocity is actually measured over 128 steps. So if you imagine the sort of dynamic range of the performance, how hard you hit the keys, effectively every key strike will be translated into one of those slots between 1 and 128. And we can actually see that within Logic's um, arrangement. If I come up to here, and I open up the display a little bit here and come to the custom option so that the range of things that I can see at the same time gets bigger, I can see the MIDI in and out options here. And if I select my daylight piano, the sound where we're going to add the melody, and I start playing velocities on my keyboard, I can see the velocity is over here on the right hand side. I can see the pitch and then over here where my mouse is, I'll leave it just here, we'll see the velocity for every note that I play. So that was a very loud one, and that's a 24, and that's a 58, and we can see all of that velocity data as it goes in. Now, that's great, because what we can do with velocity is we can ask it to be assigned to different parameters within our synthesizers. Most of the time, what we want it to do is to be assigned to volume. If you sit down at an acoustic piano and play gently, you want the sound to be quiet. And if you play more forcefully, you want it to be loud. So we're used to the idea that what happens when we play our MIDI keyboards is that we want stronger performances to be louder than quieter ones. But we can actually do other things with the velocity too. We can ask it to control other things, like for example, brightness. If we had a snare sound here and we wanted harder hits to be brighter, we could ask a velocity to open the filter on a sound and make it a bit brighter than quieter hits, which maybe open up the filter a little bit less. So we'll see in future videos how velocity can be configured in lots of different ways. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how velocity can be used in a more traditional manner to make sure that our volume never becomes too extreme. We don't want notes to be too quiet and to get lost, and we definitely don't want notes to become too pingy and loud and to dominate the backing track behind it. So what I'm going to do is to record a melody in, and then we'll just see what we've got from a velocity perspective. I'm not going to think too carefully about whether or not I'm hitting notes hard or softly. So what we've got now is our melody. Let's have a listen back. What I'm actually going to do is just to quantize it. And I think actually from a rhythmic point of view, there's one note I need to adjust here as well so that it's sitting better with these chords. Let's just move that one across over here. And you can see that within Logic's piano roll display, when I open this up in order to make that adjustment, I can also see all of the individual velocities that have been assigned to these notes. What do I mean by that? At the moment, I can only see their pitch. Well, their color tells me quite a lot about their volume. Bright notes in Logic are brighter colors, so the red notes are the loudest ones, and the green and the blue, more muted tones, are quieter velocities. And we can see that even more clearly if we come and open up the um, automation within the piano roll display. By clicking this button, I have a chance to see the velocities for every single note. So I can see that this first note that I played is very loud, and so is this one, and so are these two over here, whereas these following two notes, for instance, are much quieter. 
So if I want to control velocity and get things under control so that I don't have this enormous range of different velocities, how can I do that? Well, one way I can do it is to actually work within this window. For instance, what I could do would be to come through this first note and simply grab its velocity data and bring it down to something that's a bit more under control. Similarly, I might decide that these ones are too quiet, and even though I want a little bit of dynamic control, what I actually want to do is to make sure that all of them operate within a much narrower range. So one note at a time, I can go through and just sort of keep the rough shape of the velocities that I was using, with some notes being louder than others, but broadly, just bringing them all under a bit more control. And that involves me going through one note at a time. What I can do if I want to adjust two notes simultaneously is to highlight them both, and then I can keep their velocities together. And similarly, what I can do is actually draw a line for velocities as well. If I click within this window and press T to bring up the toolbar, I can grab the pencil tool. And if I want to, I can click and simply drag across a series of velocities and let go to create either this kind of slight ramp, or if I draw a flat line, then of course all of those velocities are going to be mapped to roughly the same number. So I can go through one note at a time, and I can get velocity under control that way. So within the automation, within the piano roll display, that's one way that I can control velocity. But what I'm actually going to do is to undo a few steps here and go back to where my sequence started, simply by going back until we've got our first note back to where it was, and we've got the full range now of the velocities that we recorded. What if I don't want to go one note at a time? Let's suppose my melody is 200 bars long rather than four bars long, and going through every single note would take a really long time. Well, there are a couple of other ways that I can process velocity to just bring everything a bit more under control. Let's look at those next. So I'm going to uh, close down the uh, piano roll display. And what I'm going to do, making sure that I've selected the daylight piano, is that I'm going to come across to the top left-hand corner of the screen, and I'm going to open up this extended parameter view within Logic. Now, these extended parameters allow me to control various things. So for example, this is the place where I'm going to find quantize and the transpose options for this part. But further down the list, what I've actually got is this little dynamics control as well. And what this allows me to do is to restrict the dynamics, and dynamics means the velocity range, of the part that I've played. So in other words, if I was to take this part down to 50%, what that's going to do is to narrow the dynamic range or the velocity range of notes that I've played from the full extreme of what I played to halfway between those two extreme points. So I'm going to be bringing down louder uh, velocities and bringing up slightly quieter velocities. So I'm really sort of compressing the velocity range over which I've played. Let's hear that. Okay, so things are still pinging a bit more than I'd like them to. What if I take down, uh, go down to 25%? Let's hear that. So straight away, that's sounding much better. What I've got a chance to do now is to get all those velocities under control. I've still got a little bit of the velocity range that I played, just a quarter of what I originally performed, but as a result, everything's a little bit more squeezed together than it was before, and those uh, brighter velocities are being tamed. But there's another way I can do it too. Let's turn that off, and we'll come back to a full 100% uh, velocity range. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of Logic's MIDI effects, and specifically, I'm going to grab the velocity processor. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned the idea that really what we're doing when we're restricting the velocity range is we're sort of compressing the velocities that we originally recorded. In other words, we're taking loud ones and bringing them down, and we're taking quieter ones and we're bringing them up. And this idea of sort of compressing that range, well, the velocity processor very much operates on that approach. So what I've got within the processor itself is firstly an opportunity to set a threshold. Now, what this does is it basically says above this velocity, and I've set it at 19, I'm going to start processing the uh, velocity strengths above that. So in other words, I'm going to start pulling in uh, louder velocities um, above a uh, sort of base level velocity of 19. How hard are those higher velocities going to be pulled in? Well, that's controlled by the ratio. The higher I make this number, 
the smaller the dynamic range of all these velocities is going to be. And you can see that as I uh, increase this, the flatter this line gets, meaning that the dynamic range of the velocities performed is simply going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then lastly, you can see that what's happening is that we're starting or we're retaining the quietest velocities imaginable. And what we're doing is then creating this kind of ramp above which these velocities are allowed to grow or get louder. What if I want the overall dynamic range of this restricted velocity set to be louder? If I want everything to come up a bit, I can use this makeup control. And what that's going to do effectively is to add 40 units of velocity to all of the processed velocities that I've created using the processor. In other words, the dynamic range is still going to be restricted, but all of the notes are going to be a bit louder. Now, what we're seeing on this display when it plays back is we can see where the original velocities were created. So where this little light comes on, it's showing me the original velocity. And then along this line, I can effectively see where that's being processed to. If this is 1 and this is 127, we're roughly operating around the kind of 64 mark, halfway between those two extremes. So you can see that the loudest velocities are still a tiny bit louder than the quieter ones, but not much. If I wanted this to be a little less restrictive, what I could do would be to decrease the ratio so that the loudest notes are allowed to be a bit louder than the quieter ones. And it goes without saying that I don't have to just use one of these techniques. The velocity processor is doing a really nice job, but there are a couple of notes that don't feel quite right to me. Well, that's easy enough. I can go back into my MIDI region and go and find the notes that I don't like. This last one at the end of this first phrase feels really pingy to me. So what I can do is to adjust that. And of course, that means that the velocity at that point that's being fed into the velocity processor is going to be lower, and therefore it's not going to ring out as much as it does right now. So within this video, we've spotted three ways that we can work with velocity to control how loud and bright individual piano notes get within this musical example that we've made. We can go note by note within the note editor, we can open up automation and we can find the individual velocities so that we can find every single note and make it be the velocity we want it to be. Alternatively, in the top left-hand corner of the main page, we can go to the Dynamics drop-down and we can restrict dynamic range to 75 or 50 or 25 percent, which effectively takes all of the velocities that we've played and compresses them so that the dynamic range of those velocities is less. Or we can use one of Logic's MIDI effects. The velocity processor builds on what that dynamics processor does and gives us a much more a sort of pleasing to look at and user controllable interface where we can set a threshold, the point at which uh, we start processing velocities, a ratio, how hard those velocities are going to be processed, and then a makeup control, which allows us to turn everything back up if our processed velocities are too quiet. And as a result of working with these dynamics processors, um, what we can do is to control velocity on a note-by-note -note basis to make sure that musically, velocity never gets out of control.